Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examinations. I'm Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2D4, which we've called inductors. So starting at intermediate license level. Inductors are all about magnetic fields, currents and forces. There are a few hand rules to help you relate the juxtaposition of these three quantities in different circumstances. For this syllabus item, we confine ourselves to just two rules as they cover most of the circumstances that you'll encounter. For the radio amateur exams, you don't need a great deal of detail. As long as you know the requirements listed in the syllabus, you can treat the rest as background. You are not required to apply the hand rules and they are given as supplemental information only as they help us to understand concepts such as back EMF and why a transformer inverts the signal on the secondary winding. But more on that later. Ampere's right hand rule. This is also known as the right hand grip rule. It allows us to identify the relationship between the conventional current direction in a wire and the direction of the magnetic field. In the sketch, the thumb indicates the direction of the conventional current, while the fingers curl to show the direction of the magnetic field. This graphic depicts a steady DC current. If an AC current were flowing, the hand would have to change direction each half cycle, and the magnitude of the field would be constantly changing. This is shown in this animation. Notice that the magnetic field is moving. It grows and shrinks to zero, changes direction and grows again. It is this movement that is crucial to the uh, induction of a current in another wire, in a transformer, which is mutual inductance or in the same wire, which is self-inductance. So a current passing through a wire forms a magnetic field around the wire. If the current varies, the magnetic field will also vary. Fleming's left-hand rule. This relates the relative motion of a magnetic field and conductor to the current that flows. It is remembered like this. The thumb, emphasizing the M for motion, shows the relative motion between the conductor and the field. The forefinger, emphasizing the F for field, shows the direction of the magnetic field and the center finger, emphasizing the C for current, shows the direction of the current flow. This animation shows Fleming's left-hand rule being used to show these three quantities, motion, field and current, in a DC motor. Also shown are the brushes and commutator, which switches the direction of the current every half cycle to maintain the motion of the motor. Generator effect. Transformers and electric generators all rely on the principle that if you have relative movement between a conductor and a magnetic field, a voltage will be induced on that conductor. And if the conductor is part of a circuit, a current will flow in that circuit. This is illustrated in the animation. The bar magnet is moving through the coil of wire and the lines of flux created by the bar magnet are cutting the wire and inducing a voltage and hence current as the circuit is completed by the ammeter. The force exerted on the uh, magnet to move it through the coil is translated into electrical current. 
This is the generator effect. Notice that the current is at a maximum when the crank is vertical. This is because that is when the magnet is moving fastest. The output of the AC generator is a sine wave because the velocity of the bar mag magnet is sinusoidal. As the bar magnet changes direction, it is stationary for an instant. And then, at that point, the current is zero. So, it is the relative movement of a conductor and a magnetic field that will induce a voltage across the ends of the conductor. Inductors are electronic components that utilize the magnetic field around a current carrying wire to store energy. To optimize or concentrate this magnetic field, inductors are normally wound helically. Often the wire is wound around a former, which further concentrates the field, increasing the inductance. In general, inductance is achieved with more turns, tighter windings, and larger diameter turns. The unit of inductance is the Henry, unit abbreviation capital H, and inductance is the ability to store energy in a magnetic field. Moving on to full license level, a key point to remember about inductors is that they oppose changes in current flow. At the instant that a DC source is applied to an inductor, a magnetic field starts to grow, which cuts the inductor itself. This relative movement between the magnetic field and the conductor generates a back EMF, which opposes the growth of the current, which therefore only gradually rises to the maximum value. Contrast this with a DC voltage applied to a resistor, where the current instantly reaches the maximum value. The opposition to the change in current also applies to the situation where the source EMF reduces. This causes the magnetic field to slightly shrink and the consequent uh, relative movement generates an EMF which tends to prop up or reinforce the current flowing. Energy is returned from the magnetic field to the conductor. This property of an inductor has a lot of uses. For example, if placed in series with a DC power line, then it will help to smooth DC by opposing the ripples or changes in current caused by the rectifier. We will be covering rectification for syllabus item 2J2 later. Self-inductance occurs when the magnetic field lines of flux produced by a current in a conductor cut the conductor itself, causing a voltage to be induced, opposing the original current change. This voltage is termed back EMF. Even straight wires have inductance. The moving magnetic field generated by an AC source cuts the wire itself. This happens to a greater extent at the centre of the wire than at the circumference, resulting in more back EMF at the centre than at the surface of the wire. The result is that for AC signals, the current tends to be pushed out to the skin of the conductor. This skin effect, as it is called, becomes significant over very long distances or very high frequencies. Overhead electricity distribution cables are often hollow to save weight, as the centre part of the conductor carries little current. Coaxial feeders used for higher frequencies also use hollow centres, as shown in the graphic here. In the next video, 2D5, we will look at inductors in series and parallel, at intermediate level only. So that concludes the syllabus item 2D4, inductors. Thank you for watching.